Okay, this is a demonstration of running uh, Java EE applications on Pyara Micro and showing how uh, lightweight Java EE is when running in a micro container like Pyara Micro. So we have a demonstration application uh, as shown on this uh, slide. So what we're going to do is we have uh, two Raspberry Pis. One of the Raspberry Pis is going to be uh, using an EJB timer to generate a stock price, which is just a random number. And it's going to fire that stock price object as a CDI event. And that's going to be picked up by a second Pyara Micro running in a cluster. Uh, Pyara Micro has a capability of running in uh, a clustered CDI event bus where event CDI events from one Pyara Micro can be picked up in a second Pyara Micro. So our second Pyro Micro is going to be running a web application, and that web application is going to have uh, a WebSocket endpoint, and that WebSocket endpoint is going to stream JSON data down to a browser. The result of which will look something like this. So uh, we have a web application which is receiving the JSON data from the browser, from the uh, Pyro Micro, and rendering a real-time graph. So the interesting thing about this is uh, really had the size and how we run the application within Pyro Micro. So what I have here, I have two uh, Raspberry Pis. So I'm remote desktoping into two Raspberry Pis. Uh, Pyro 1 is running the web application and Pyara 2 is running an EJB timer. So the first thing to do to look at when you're doing this is to really look at the footprint of running Java EE. So there's a lot of mythology out there that says you can't run Java EE for microservices or for uh, you know anything in a Docker container as it's too heavyweight. So we built Pyara Micro to be a very lightweight container for running Java EE applications. So you can see this. This is Pyara 2. So this is running the. Uh, this is basically running the EJB timer. So you can see from the console here that it's generating every second. We're generating a price with a uh, random number as a value. So that, and that's what that's doing, as we saw in the slide. So I've also got J console attached to it. You can see that it's running Pyara Micro, and you can see that this is actually running in the EJB in a container memory footprint of somewhere between you know, 28 and 40 megabytes a heap. So if I, if I do a couple of GCs, you actually see that it's actually running in less heap than that. So we're running around 20 megabytes to 40 megabytes. So it's incredibly lightweight. So how do we actually run this uh, EGB jar in Pyara Micro? So if I just kill I kill our uh, EGB off, you can see how we lose our J console connection. We also find out that the uh, stock price stops updating to prove that it is generated from this application. Uh, so to actually run it, let's have a quick look what's, what have I got in my directory. So I have a Pyra micro jar in my home directory. Uh, that's running, a, a jar is only around 60 megabytes in size. I also have a stock ticker jar, which is a standard EGB jar, and that is 4K in size. If I to, so actually to run that EGB jar and deploy it within Pyro Micro, all I do is Java minus jar, Pyro Micro dot jar, which is the runtime, minus minus deploy on the command line, and then the actual EGB jar artifact. I'll show in a second the code for that jar. So if you just bootstrap that, what you'll see is, remember this is running on a Raspberry Pi as well, so it'll take a little while. Uh, what you see is it will bootstrap, it will auto cluster uh, with the uh, Pyara Micro on the second, on the on the other Raspberry Pi. We'll see that flash up where you see we've got two members there. That's because it's auto clustered. And then once it's bootstrapped, it will uh, basically fire off the EGB timer again. So I'll just reconnect, just kill off this Jake console connection uh, and connect to the new one. You can see now that the EGB timer is firing. And uh, you 
can see how we're back to our memory footprint of 30 to 40 megs. And a web application is back generating data. So if we look at the uh, web application for this as well on Power Micro, we can see this is the web application console window. You can see it's receiving messages uh, over the cluster and it's uh, writing them down to a web socket, which is this uh, UUID here, is that ID, the session ID. So this is running a full WAR file. And you can see that that again is running in a 40 to 60 megabyte heap size. I perform GC a couple of times, we can get it down to, you know. So it, again, this is running a full web application in uh, a very, very small footprint. And exactly the same way as before, if you just kill that off, it's run exactly the same way as before. So we've got Java minus Jar, Pyara micro dot Jar, minus minus deploy, and then the WAR file. And that's all there is for Pyara micro. You can see it's incredibly small footprint, very easy to use, uh, very easy to run on something as small as a Raspberry Pi. Uh, and so therefore Java is definitely not a heavyweight. For those interested in the code, we can have a quick look at the code. If I bring up, uh, bring up NetBeans, which is running on my laptop. Okay, so what we have is two very, very bog standard uh, Java EE applications in NetBeans. One of them is a Maven EGB jar uh, that has a uh, two classes in it. One is the stock POJO, which we're going to send over the network, which is pretty, pretty simple. And I've overrode this two string method to give a JSON just so I, the code's simple. So the stock ticket EJB, this is it. This is the, all the code we have. So it's a singleton EJB. It bootstraps on startup of the application. We have some Pyara Micro specifics here, which is we have a clustered CDI event bus. So we just inject that. It's mainly so we can initialize it uh, in the post construct. We also have a standard CDI event generator there for stock objects. And we have a Pyara Micro specific uh, annotation called outbound which basically says send this uh, event outbound into the cluster, essentially outbound from this Pyara micro. And then we have a very st a standard uh, EGB timer schedule that this fires once every second. Uh, we create a new stock object. We give it a random number for its price, and then we fire it through CDI. And that's all the uh, EGB jar application is doing and that so that builds within NetBeans to produce a very standard EGB jar. So if we look at the actual files that's generating, you can see very, here's the jar file, standard jar, just with a meta in manifest and the classes. Yeah, it's just an EGB jar. And then for the web application, we have a very standard web application. Uh, from using Maven. We have a bunch of uh, jQuery and high charts in here. So if you look at the index.jsp, uh, what we are, so the, what we're using in this demo is, is a uh, third party charting framework called high charts, which is doing all the fancy HTML5 charts. But we also have a WebSocket connection here. So on our on message, so we're basically when we receive a WebSocket message, what we do is we get the, we parse the event data coming off the WebSocket. We create an a X value, which is the current time. And we create the Y value, which is the price that we got from the JSON object. We then add that point to the chart and that gives us the magic updating chart using high charts. So we have a couple of classes within our EGB, sorry, in our web application. One is the server WebSocket endpoint. So here's an example of the WebSocket endpoint. It's on slash graph and we inject a session manager, which I'll look at in a second, which I wrote. And essentially these are our WebSocket callbacks. On open, we register, register a session with the session manager 
on close, we deregister our session with the session manager. If we get an error, we deregister ourselves. So the session manager here is a standard CDI bean. It's application scoped. Uh, we inject again our C clustered CDI event bus, which is power micro specific, only again so we can initialize it in the post construct. That only needs to be done once in your application. And then we have a CDI observer method on our uh, on our application scope bean. We observe method, the observe events of type stock that are also annotated with inbound. And what the inbound annotation means is we're interested in events that come into our application from the cluster. So once we receive a, a stop object from the EJB timer across the cluster, we basically iterate through all our web session, our WebSocket sessions and send the JSON string down to uh, the browser to generate a nice pretty graph. So if I refresh the browser to reconnect to our application, after I've shut it down and restarted it, we'll see that we get the updates and we get a nice updating graph. So in this demo, this is a demo we did in uh, the JAX conference in Mainz to show how lightweight Java EE really is. So just to reiterate that point again, we have here a full web application running within 20 to 50, 20 to 50 meg of heap, clustered with a EJB timer application, so that's running the EJB container, and that's running in a 20 to 30 megabyte, 35 megabyte heap. You can do the similar with RESTful endpoints or something. So you can easily run Java EE microservices uh, with incredibly small footprints on Pyara Micro. So thank you for listening. If you want any more information, uh, just go to the Pyara website. We'll get the code uh, up onto our uh, GitHub repository, and you'll be able to take a look at it there as well. Thank you very much.